highest yield bit of information within the biostats and behavioral science section, and that is the difference between a cohort study and a case control study. If you've done any question banks at all, you absolutely are already familiar with just how high yield this is. And knowing the subtle differences between these two studies could be the difference between a 228 and a 234, something like that. It'll definitely put you from one echelon of score into the next. So understanding these topics is just free points that you cannot afford to miss. What we're going to do today is begin with cohort studies, and then I'll go into case control studies after that. The two biggest pieces of information that I want you guys to take away from this video today is which study gives you which calculation and in which direction the study proceeds. If you're very confused by what that means, don't worry, we're going to go over it. Let's start with the cohort study. So the, what I want you to do when you think of the cohort study and the case control study is we're going to think of the vowels in the name. So you see that cohort has two O's, but you see that in case control, their first word has an A and the second word has an O. So that's what really what we're going to hone in on. In cohort, I've highlighted those two O's for you and isolated them from the word. You can see that these are the same letters. So what I want you to say to yourself is that relatives are the same. You are similar to your relatives. So O and O, they're the same. And this mnemonic helps remind us that a cohort study is what you want to use relative risk for. The cohort gives you the relative risk, okay? Relative risk, cohort. This is an association that you have to cement into your brain. This is high yield, five-star topic, 10 stars, whatever you want to say, know this, okay? The next thing that you need to do after you've understood that cohorts and relative risk are associated, is you need to know the direction of these studies. So there's a prospective study which looks forward, and there's a retrospective study which looks backwards. Now, cohort, generally speaking, are prospective. They look forward. They There is a subtle uh, caveat here in that they can be retrospective, but for all, for our purposes, step one, you think cohort, prospective, looking forward. So how do we remember this? What is the mnemonic? Well, I have that for you right here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a, a circle around these O's and we're going to create a face. And then we're going to give our guy some eyes and see how his eyes are looking forward. This is telling us that cohort studies are prospective studies. They look forward in time. They follow a group forward. They give you the relative risk. Why do they give you the relative risk? Because O's are the same. What else is the same? Relatives. This slide Look at this, there's barely anything on this slide, but this gives you just about everything you need to know for step one as it relates to a cohort study. Now, once you're comfortable with that, we're gonna go ahead and compare that to a case control study. A case control study, I told you, has two different vowels. They have an A and an O. In other words, these letters are at odds with one another. They are not the same. They are not relatives, so they are not relative risks. Instead, they are at odds with one another. They will give you the odds ratio. Guys, HY, high yield, okay? Odds ratio and case control. The next thing that we need to understand about case control studies is which direction they follow their participants. So we said that a cohort is usually prospective, looking forward. Remember, we drew the big circle around the eyes, and they were looking forward. However, a case control is going to be retrospective. It's going to look back in time at an exposure and say, what happened? Okay, so you start with the disease, and you look retrospective or back in time. How do we remember that? What is the mnemonic? Well, you see this letter A here? We're going to turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise. And when we do that, it forms a backwards arrow if you draw in a little tail. That reminds us that the case control study looks back in time at an exposure. So an example of this on step one would be if they said um, a group of type 2 diabetics is being evaluated, blah, 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 and they look at some exposure 10 years ago and try to assess if what the odds ratio is. They won't say odds ratio, but they're going to be basically trying to assess they had some exposure 10 years ago, and if you had that exposure, what are the odds that you got type 2 diabetes? That's why it gives you the odds ratio. So again, I just want to summarize what we talked about today. We started with the cohort. 
We isolated the O's. We said the O's are the same, just like relatives are the same. So it gives you the relative risk. We drew a face around those O's and those eyes were looking forward. Therefore, we knew that the cohort was a prospective study. We contrasted that with a case control study where the A and the O are different. They are at odds with one another. Therefore, it gives you the odds ratio. We wanted to remind ourselves, which direction does this study proceed? So we flipped that A sideways and drew a tail on it, and it reminded us that it is a retrospective study. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today. It was short. It was sweet. But I promise you it's high yield. Biostats, expect at least 12 questions on biostats. It's high yield. It behooves you to know this. I hope this was helpful. Good luck.